And we're live. Wonderful. Welcome to Auto Steed World Building. Uh, I'm Kettle and Clock. This is Posh. And, and that's uh, Libri. Uh, and we are here to build out a region for the ongoing game design of Autosteed. Um, you can find the base game at kettleandclock.itch.io and links to all of the places at linktree slash kettleandclock. Uh, we also post the VODs for these streams on YouTube, so if you're curious how we got here, there's a link to that as well. I should actually put chat. Oh. Up the chat. How do I not have the chat up? Even I've got the chat up. There we go. Chat is out. Twitch stream is shut. So I can focus all of my web resources on being audible. Fabulous. Awesome. I don't have a button to open the chat in Streamlabs. Where have I gone wrong? I don't know. Well, this is wonderful content, isn't it? I even pr press pause on music. There we go. Let's at least have some music in the background. It's riveting. Um, <laughs> oh, Posh, you're going to go into the thing and I will mute. I can't mute you specifically. If you could check that the music is working. really nice and uh that's really nice lo-fi it, it is, is working great. it's very gentle it's good and when i talk are you still on there yeah and it should then when i talk it basically goes down to nothing yeah pretty much sweet Uh, and could you also post the link on your Discord again? While I find chat box. Will do. I'd have to just... Go to the channel. About the chat box. Not sure what happened with Streamlabs there, but I have a chat box. Okay, I have a chat box. Now, I did set up the bot, which is in my thing that I have to say. We do have a bot set up. So if I type in mm -hmm. link, links, there it is. Yes. That didn't work. No. Technical difficulties abound. That is hilarious, actually. Um, when I set up the links thing, I pressed mm -hmm. enter, 
and apparently it doesn't do multi-line and so all of my links have two at the end of the link instead of in the next man's custom let's fix this quickly thanks Let's try that again. Links. Okay. We have links that work. Theory. Woohoo. Okay. Yeah. Click on. Yeah, well, they all look right now. Yeah. That's better. Okay. Yes. So we do have a bot set up. So you can use the links command to get those later on. Okay, and I thought if we do a recap, um, I think that Posh actually took notes. Um, so maybe Libri, if you and I uh, explain what we remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest thing was that our, our current region is um, extremely uh, seismic activity. Um, Volcanic activity, all that kind of stuff. Yes, I believe there was a geyser. Hmm. Or many, in fact, and one large one in the center. And then our first set of steeds were a huge bat and a sugar glider. And the fish. Yes, the fish with the glue egg with the glue on the eggs. Yes. Yes. My only note, my only contribution to the world really notes was just fish in all caps. <laughs> oh, yes, and I wrote that. Yes. Dangerous but useful fish slash amphibian. Hmm. Uh, so post you're gonna have to fill in everything else that we've missed. Um because you wrote down all the notes. Ah. All right. I am nearly done posting this literally everywhere. Hooray for posting literally everywhere. Woo! Actually... I think to the best of my knowledge, it was very nomadic initially. Because of the geyser. Well, I think, yeah, I think generally it's considered a very dangerous place because of the constant earthquakes and, and volcano volcanic activity. Um, awesome. And yeah, so. I think the our um, our little people were kind of passing through, or yeah. all that kind of thing. But then it gets flooded around the time that they start trying to create a settlement. I think. Oh like, yeah, and they yeah, they were it becomes a lake, right? It it yeah it does. But they were um, bringing the gourds from the bamboo plants to capture the water. Yes, and they were using, I think they were using the bamboo in general to help build their settlements because it had a very, very high heat resistance. Yes. They were using the gourds, they were using the bamboo, and they were using the adhesive from the fish, which works really well underwater. No, it doesn't and work well. It's not that it works well underwater. It was that um, it, it, uh, it is liquid underwater. And then it sets. Liquid underwater and solid in the air. Right? Yeah. So when so they they do all the work underwater. And then bring stuff up to the surface to set it. Yeah. All right. So the land of the area it is an early population that didn't have a broad view of things. So they had no immediate goals or long term goals. So they were, they were often. often just kind of constantly traveling back and forth between the reason because it wasn't really safe to stay too long. But they did eventually kind of get used to the region, uh, learning how to kind of live there. Um, 
it is a very uh, highly volcanic area where they would extract ores. The geological issues are a danger. Most would just come and leave because they couldn't stay long, but it's um, it was the reward for being able to kind of go and um, come back. It, it, it was high risk, high reward type of area. Yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. There were hot springs that burst while mining. Um, got, uh, there's something in the water. It's 50% like an urban legend in that area. Um, they train youths to be strong swimmers and miners. There's a folk tale of a god under the water. Um, one massive geyser, a few, uh, one of the few sources of clean water. The locals will um, gather for clean water, setting up gathering devices for clean water. Uh, they would place stones near geysers to single neighbor, uh, s single. Uh, the signal neighbors and friends that they're there. Children would also use this uh, uh, bravery game type of thing where they would see how close to the guys that they could get um who could get the rock close to the guy uh the mouth of the geyser um so for food and water for the locals if there's a uh, heat resistant bamboo and it fruits with gourds on it um and they have a dry moss flower to cultivate um which is hard to cultivate but it is fast growing um uh generally nomadic travelers they use the stars to navigate when volcanic uh, volcanic activity dies down people are able to navigate so it's very um it's very reliant on when vault uh, volcanic activity does die down to be able to come in and out yes um, because everyone else navigates by the stars um hmm. i remember that and then yeah they they kind of run the year's calendar by how much smoke is in the air. Mm. Yeah, so the first portion of the clear season is essentially their New Year's and it's Yeah. Um they have a big party. Hell yeah. Um that allows people to navigate in. <laughs> Um, and because of the volcanic activity, the sky does turn to purple, then to red, then to blue, and the seasons are determined by the sky color. Yeah. And they've got a uh, local term to, uh, to effectively means good luck. Hey, may your may you have clear skies is their one of the local phrases. So those of the area would wish you good luck by telling you may you have clear skies. Um, we did establish there was a chunk taken out of the moon. Yes. Just for the sake of it. Yes. Yeah, for absolutely. For funsies. <laughs> um, we, we took a bite out of the moon for fun. Um, so this we've reminds got... me of, uh, did either of you ever watch The Dick when you were younger? The animated series? The what, sorry? The dick. Yes. No. There was this so you if you haven't watched the dick, there's a villain in there called Chairface Chippendale, and for one episode, his big evil scheme is to create a massive laser so that he can just carve his name on the moon just for funsies. These are the kind of villains we need more of. Yeah. He, um, I think he gets thwarted halfway into the episode, so he only manages to carve C, H, and half of an A, but it's there permanently on the moon for every episode after that. Amazing. Nice. Okay, so rolling straight in, we're going to continue with the ground itself. Mm -hmm. um, and with a bit of luck, we won't, we won't draw a 10 right up. Um, you guys happy with uh, keeping the same order, or do you want to switch it up this time? I'm happy however we do it. I'm fine. 
I have completely forgotten how this game works. Well, lucky you were about to start playing and you can start remembering. Ooh. So, uh, we do have our last session's cards here. And last session we did a two, a nine, and a five. Um, uh, and that means that this Kosha's next card being a nine, ask the second question in the nines. Um, so Posh, is, is there a link to the ground itself thing playing at the moment that I'm not aware of? Or it's in the if you go to the pinned messages in the world building chat, and there is a ah, separate link to the ground itself. And this is a fantastic point because I also up. Um, bot. And games, games that we're playing today. Ah, I'm in. Uh, no, where I'm to buy them at least. And I think you were talking about the uh, tabletop, weren't you? Um, yeah. Yep. I'm in. You're in. Here we go. Nines. So yes, each number has four questions uh, that relate to somewhat to the same rough idea. Uh, go through the questions as we draw the cards. Nines. Uh, the second nine, uh, someone or a group of people leaves our place. Who are they and why are they going? What do they take with them? What do they leave behind? All right, someone leaves. I don't want to make it that it's like it's the. I don't want to be redundant and be like it's the people that like they come and go. Ha 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 ha. Hmm. That's a hard one. Well, I mean, if we're you said that everyone comes and goes, and who would it be? Like, there's only a small group of people that are staying. Obviously, that something must have happened to, to fracture that group. Mm. Or, um, what if, um, the, 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 when you go into some of the settlements that are around, or you go into the settlement, it's primarily young, as it's when you are older, um, the, the older people leave, they go on, um, they go on a journey that's part of their, it's like retirement. So we're doing a so Logan's run. Pardon? Oh, sorry. Is that an, a too older reference? Yeah, the people that know that have gone. That's what I'm getting at. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Uh, no, Logan's Run was a science fiction uh, book and movie uh, where it was this uh, paradise city at the end of the world um, where... Uh, yeah, once you hit, I think it was 30, you were ascended to the next level of existence, which means you were kicked out of the city. Oh, shit. That doesn't sound nice. No. But of course, everyone in the city just thinks that, like, that it's legitimately, like, like going to heaven. Wow. What a shock that had have to be. Well, I've just ruined the, the, the twist... I've spoiled a, a movie that you're all too young to remember. <laughs> um, I love it though. I, I yeah, I love the yeah, idea. Yeah, that... yeah. Uh, it's. I don't want this to be like they're kicked out. It's more of a. It's part of the culture where. Um, 
it's just an accepted thing that before they do pass away of old age, that they get to go out and, you know, like, be part of a greater world. Okay. And we did say right at the very start that this, um, this section of the ground itself, um, the ground itself, the game, uh, about time passing. So we're talking about the first kind of like what what this area is like in the first thousand years. Um, I think yeah, that like it was young people who came first place to to try and strike it rich, and yeah, something must have happened over that early time that that into their culture that once you get old enough, maybe is it just that everyone left like it, they were coming and leaving and they decided that you know it's too dangerous a place for an older person to stay i think it might have started with like your typical retirement so it's like these people don't stay it's like it's you, you know, you've retired now you can leave the workplace and that has evolved into something like um the retirement is they leave and um, exp uh, they explore the world. Fair enough. It's it's like a reverse Pokemon. It's once you turn fifty four, you're given your first steed and you're left out in the world. Well, not left, but yeah, you go on your oh, adventure. Yeah, you, you go on your adventure. The whole new meaning to get to Grey Nomads, eh? Yeah. Um, the other question here was, what do they take with them and what do they leave behind? Sorry, I'm just jumping back on the previous point of it. Didn't we also say that the, even for the people who have settled here, the conditions are a bit harsh? It's a bit of an unforgiving place to live. Mm. That makes sense. Like it being sort of like a, almost like a, a frontier mining town mm. where people go where they have a lot of energy and a lot of drive. And once they feel that they've done their due diligence, they move on. That does make sense. Yeah. I like I like the idea. It's like, um, I'm tired. I need to slow down. Let's go on an adventure. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, by comparison, it would be an it would be slowing down quite a bit. Oh yeah. So and also they... that implies that every most other cities in the world you have the standard young hero who's like in his early 20s or a teenager but from this place everyone is middle -aged. every adventurer is middle-aged oh yeah i want to say it's i want to say at 40 to 50 is where people start leaving yeah, that it, makes sense. It's because that's where, um, like, because it is a harsh environment, is um, people. And I, I want to say, like, the land itself does take its toll. Mm -hmm. So by the time they're 40 or 50, some of them w might not have a limb, some of them might have, like, some illness that makes it incredibly Ooh. hard to continue working as uh... oh that makes sense coming back to the idea of it sort of being like a mining town you know how miners will occasionally get lung problems and whatnot from breathing in yeah dust and stuff from mine. so there's so much ash there's so much ash in the air because of volcanic activity oh yeah there's just so much in the air. So at some point, uh, it's these people leave for better horizons. And the it's positively reinforced by the fact that they leave and they're able to breathe well again. Yeah. Oh, and then you could have clear, say clear skies to them again because they're out searching for clear skies when they retire. Yeah. Not to mention, but like an entire life, like an entire childhood at least, spent in that smoky area. Their, their lungs would actually be more powerful than regular people. Not to mention how much they, they dive. We saying like a lot of the construction happens under, underwater. Oh, yeah. So they'd have really powerful lungs. Like, so when they leave and they're not in that smoky area, they would have almost like superhuman breathing control. Hmm. I 
love how nicely this ties into the fact that the fish species there is an amphibious species that can breathe in or out of water. Yes. Which is impressive. Mm. <sighs> Some things just make too much sense and we need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and that brings us to our next question, which is a three. First three. One. Um, so, I think that was me, was that on the bottom? So, I asked, I answered the question, what do people listen to and perform here? What is considered folk art? Ooh. Hmm. Okay. My the first... first instinct. Oh, yeah, sorry. go ahead. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I jumped in because I said it here and here. My first instinct is because we have the bamboos and the gourds, you'd have like wind instruments and percussions. Well, yeah, that was going to be my first comment button. was that with the gourds, I yeah. think it, the gourds might make very good. Well, the bamboo would make good uh, like pipes, flute pipes and that kind of thing. But I don't know about the gourds because normally the drums you you want kind of something thin stretch, stretched out over a something. Um, so a, a gourd makes a great percussive instrument. Uh, yeah, think more you like on a cooler. Exactly. You don't need to have a skin necessarily. You can just use the hollowness of the gourd itself. Although you can cut to the larger portion of it and stretch the skin. Think more say more like um beads within the gourds oh like the like shakers yeah yeah so I don't know what they're it's called. um uh it's th there's an instrument called a bonna cooler which is two small hollow like uh Ooh. wooden Ooh. things with a string between and they make like a really nice uh, yeah. type of um beads and they are really fun instruments yeah. Because you can make them just about out of anything. Yeah. And I was just or, thinking, um, um, mm -hmm. I, we were saying that the the sugar gliders um, make their homes in the gourds that, that drop. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the idea that, like, the if these gourds are kind of naturally resonant... Um, just because they're they're round and they they drop off and they have this hole in the middle at the top from where they dropped off, and yeah. so it kind of creates a resonant chamber. And so the mm -hmm. the sugar gliders running through the bamboo, like going from nest to nest and that kind of thing, that would make this kind of background percussion. Oh yeah, it would just kind of be in the air. And I love it. That's I love it. Google. I just googled instruments made out of gourds and I'm in on the Google images. There are so many beautiful and fascinating looking instruments. Mm. Oh, and we said we said a flute. What if the gourd like if you'd pick a gourd that's only half grown and drill holes in it and make like an ocarina? Ooh. I am looking right now at a gourd that seems to have been made into an ocarina. There we go. Oh, Wait, yeah. Let me just drop the image. Should I put it in the chat itself? Yeah. For the stream? Yeah. Oh, I, I can't. I'm not logged into. <laughs> well, that'll be uh, something. Um, I am... Wait, I'll just put it in the voice chat and one of you can share it in the chat. Uh, but yeah, so I, I love if this the, the the people like develop this kind of high rhythm based musical style. Um, kind of um, really uh, fast paced and energetic. Mm -hmm. I think that would reflect really well if we're going with like the gourds with the like the sh as a shaker rattle type of thing as a percussive instrument when um like the sugar gliders if i remember rightly we were making them like a 
Uh, I, did we have their... I don't have anything for like their family size. This is a Hawaiian musical instrument. That's fascinating. But um, if they, they if they were to travel in droves, I think they were in small families. Small families. So imagine small families um, jumping from the bamboo. Um. And you would hear that in like fast paced, um, like you'd get the they'd grab one, you'd hear the rattle, then they'd move along, and you'd hear another rattle, and like six of them just running, or, um, leaping through the bamboo, um, rattling these gourds would create a um, this almost like beat. Mm. That is very fast paced, feels like a run. Yeah. Type and of beat. Like if you think about you've got the uh well, I it's a fairly common thing in like uh Chinese in like Wuxia films to have the sound of the, the wind running through the bamboo. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um and that kind of like with that as like, because as, as whenever there would be wind, that the bamboo would create that kind of sound, and then you'd have the the hu gliders running through, creating like this, uh, like a syncopated rhythm that's like not like we've got a very standard the way we make mu- music is very standard rhythm. I think if it was like this really chaotic rhythm, that's this really high paced, energetic kind of thing. I love the idea of early folk music from these instruments essentially being trying to mimic mm. the bass or the sound of the sugar gliders in the back because that's where you what you find mostly in the caves and near the bamboo. So you could have like these very, very, as you said, like very, very fast paced, high energy, uh, percussion heavy things for the sugar gliders and maybe more fluid <gasps> bamboo tones for to simulate the bats gliding um what um an idea what if there was um what the locals would refer to as a song of storms and it is the local wildlife um kind of getting into cover and that's what they replicate with these instruments as it starts off really slow and it builds up into something chaotic where it might be like a rattle then another rattle then as it simulates the wind picking up you get those wind instruments that are playing mm. yeah as it oh, picks it up can sort of sound like re- uh, oncoming rain or something yeah so as it all picks up, it because it's more to do with the wildlife reacting to the storm, and that is how you know. Mm. And it's um it's those sugar gliders jumping through the bamboo, and as more and more react to that incoming yeah. storm, it builds and becomes louder and more rattles, more wind instruments, to the point where it is this really loud thing. Um, and that is when the storm hits and it is loud and it's a lot going on and it's a very primal feeling in that moment as um, that part, point in the song is caught in the storm. That's beautiful. And- Can I make one minor suggestion to that? Mm-hmm. Um, instead of it being a reaction to an oncoming storm, what if it's an oncoming reaction to seismic activity? Because we know he- animals can sense that before humans can. Yes. While you would be able to see a storm coming, you would only be able to know if seismic activity or a large volcanic eruption is about to happen by observing the animal. Yes. I love it. And I I I love the because we said an ocarina. And I I love the if the ocarina because it has a bit, bit more of a bassy kind of tone. And if that is used to kind of represent the bats, and you get and you have this kind of two, um, like this double 
style where the, the ocarinas are these kind of long notes. And then you have like this chaotic quick rhythm of the 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 percussion percussion stuff. You'll get mm. these like long drawn out notes in harmony with these crazy percussive rhythms in between. Not in between, but over the top. Mm. Mm. Kind of having the bats flying, like doing a long swoop overhead. And then you get the, the sugar gliders running amongst the, the Amongst the bamboo. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's cool. On to our third. Chord ocarina, bamboo flutes, shakers, drums. Because I mean, when you think about it, you'd end up with a lot of gourds if they were one yeah. of your only sources of food. Mm-hmm. Taking notes, potion. I am. Um, and we have our final card. Go back to the correct gif. So, Libri 7, what is the most beautiful thing in or around our place? Ooh. That's such a good question. The most beautiful thing in or around our place. I don't know why this is the hardest question I've so far. I've had ideas for everything except this one. And to be fair, we've made a very rough place, so it's a very good question, but it's very, it would, yeah, it's very hard to answer. It is a good question. I do feel like... Hmm. I'm not going to say that it's a, it's a physical place. It's more like a space that becomes beautiful on occasion. Okay. I want to say that there is... So we already discussed that there's so much ash in the air and there's so much cloud cover, except when it does become clear and whatnot. But even on... Even in the season when the sky isn't clear, there's a portion of the lake where you can see the reflections of um, you know how like in volcanic areas even when there's not volcanic activity where the lava is close to the ground there's sort of a glow mm -hmm. you, see, you see the lava sort of in there. so there's place there's a, there's a portion of the lake where you go there and at night you can see almost the drifting of the ash clouds in the reflection and you can see the glow like a soft glow, almost like firelight of distant volcanoes, and it's a beautiful, beautiful spot. I want to say that's the most beautiful spot. I love it. And like that, that would also play into why like these people were coming and going, and they they find this this lake that is safe, and it's beautiful, mm. and it's in this harsh place to find the only place in the in the region that is just lovely to be even when it's yeah, exactly. murky even when it's you know so far away from clear skies exactly it's I, a very unlikely oasis mm. it's like it's not something they thought of i'd imagine like early people coming in here may have missed that on occasion <laughs> until like someone sat down to really kind of take in what they're doing around here but i love that it's a, an interaction between the water and the sky mm. and so they yeah they the... would have missed Go on. because remember their whole they would have missed it initially because remember their whole process was to get in and get out as fast as possible because this place was too dangerous there was no point hanging around there was nothing worth sticking around for as far mm. as they were concerned yeah and I love and the, the idea is... if if it was the kind of thing that like it's more beautiful, like the, the best time to see it and the most amazing thing like the most amazing time that it happens is when it is the most quirky. Yeah, exactly. 
So you get this uh, separation between clear skies and glowing niceness. Mm. Also, an unlikely oasis is such a nice name for a module that is based in this area of the world. Unlikely. Yeah, we have to write that down. Written down. I do like that. That is such a pleasant sounding name. And it's what a thing. Very welcoming. Go on, sorry. Libri? Nothing, nothing. I was just saying it's a very welcoming sort of name. Yeah. Mm. And it's a wonderful way to, to close off this uh, period of time. Um, and yeah, so. As we close off, I'm going to, yeah, close off this uh, section of time. And just the next time we, grow, we draw a 10, we'll skip that and draw. <clears throat> um, cool. And. Ooh. There's a, there's a handful of questions here. I'm going to pick a question and then. Oh, boy. Oh, that actually perfect question for this area and this time. The gardens are planted. The work has been done and now we wait. What was planted and what are we waiting for? Ooh. I never considered the idea of doing any actual planting. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't have to be like actual gardens, actual plants. Or metaphorically gardens. Yeah, it could metaphorically be um, something. These people have done something that is going to require time. Did we not say that they were hoping to excavate something from the bed of the lake, but they're not able to reach it quite yet? It was, too deep. it was too deep for people to reach with just being able to breathe deeply, so I felt... I feel like we said that they were staying here because they were hoping to find a way to mine the bed of the lake safely? Or am I wrong? That sounds like something we said. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, I've got written here that there's uh, <clears throat> there's an urban legend. There is something in the lake. The urban legend is true, whether or not they believe it or not. Um, and something about a god in the lake. Folk tale of god underwater. So I do love that they've they've found a process that they can use uh, either to go down into the lake or breathe, or to like dig around the water. And. This is going to be like a multi-generational project. Get below the lake. What if part of their culture was... It's free diving and it's a generational thing becoming better and better. To the point where some people are underwater for damn near an hour. Hmm. Yeah. Because if... If the people who settle here, they notice that their children can dive longer and then their grandchildren can dive longer again, they start realizing that the only thing holding them back from, um, from reaching the bottom of the lake and being able to actually mine there is just developing this ability to, to hold your breath 
Mm. And yeah, developing the, the we were talking about the lungs of people once they leave are so much more powerful. Yeah. That's like a generational kind of evolutionary almost thing. With um low oxygen conditions and um with improved lungs over generations, it's they would require less oxygen and have a higher capacity to hold. So mm. they would be excellent divers. Regardless of their swimming ability, mm. they would be able to stay underwater. That makes sense. And even... Uh, even, like, being able to stay underwater for a long time, the fact that you're mining underwater means you do have to back up for air occasionally. And so any progress made towards this project of digging out the bottom of the lake would be very slow. Mm. Which is one of those things that would improve over time. So I'd imagine over generations you could actually see as these mines and ore veins and things like that. As you delve deeper and deeper, uh, uh, more and more, it's, it's one of those over time you see them kind of be tapped over generations, but it's a slow process because it's really hard to do. Okay. So with this project on the go, um, I'm going to do this question after we do. So we're going to switch over to Dekuma. You guys want to jump into that? Okay. Dekuma, um, pin? yeah, in the pins. Dekuma, um, oh. Dekuma is, uh, the tagline is the R&D for your RPG. And it's more than just a world building game. This is also a, um, like a party session zero kind of tool. Um, so this is more based on characters than the, than the area. Um, okay. So I thought we could use this to kind of create and w fill out the personalities that that um, are kind of whether they're not whether they're in control of the area or if they're just the important people or they have an important role to play in the next generation of time. Like these are the people that stories are told of in the next generation. So the movers and shakers of this um, yeah. area. In this generation. In this time, yeah. yeah. And remember, this this time is a thousand, at least a thousand years long. Yep. So these must be very important people. Um, and this will set up our, you know, this will determine a lot about what the next re next uh, era is going to be. Mm. So uh, now Dekuma does have a role for the GM that I'll play. Means we'll have two characters. Ooh. I wonder, knowing what we do about steeds in this area, steed, your character. <gasps> nice. And yeah, um, just quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, Dekimo is meant to have a semi-formed character, character concepts when you start. Yeah. Um, ooh, but I will get up Auto Steed, the game. Oh. And I'll get you to pick a mask. Oh. oh, cool. Oh, yay. I... I've done a lot of good background work on game. I don't know if I any... No. Renamed Mask. Oh. What happens when you have uh, 
copies of everything every Um, so if have you started on a, a, or would you rather we switch over to exclusive biome first and make up some more animals? I'm so happy. So I'm going to go with that cave fish. Yeah, I might go with the cave fish. I can very easily see that being a pack steed. Which would be interesting. Kind of thinking of someone that's like, they've been underwater and they've befriended a few, uh, like a little school of these. Oh, hold on. Um. Holding on. Yeah, it's um was there not one of the one and one of the steeds is like a really big one. And it can like it's like a hive kind of thing. It's like got swarms. Um Oh you just mean uh I'm I'm, I'm yeah. Just trying to remember. Yeah, one of the steed types was a swarm, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, pack. Pack. Pack? I've got pack. I thought it was like massive and it's got little ones. Ah, uh, um, so that's not in the game anymore. Ah, oh, yeah, that's fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Gotcha. Now I think it's just a swarm, a uh, pack of smaller ones. Pack. Gotcha. No, that's all right. Yeah, okay, so I'll I'll go with the pack for the cave fish. Pack cave fish. Yeah. Okay. Libri? Um, I'm going for the bat. I think a giant bat steed would be fantastic. Oh yeah. It is. Giant. I've also realized that of the two steeds I've been put in charge of creating, both of them have been flyers. I do not apologize for this. <laughs> Why would you apologize? Ever apologize for this. Giant. Oh. The, the fact that they're giant is an interesting thing too, which means seeing one of those would be yeah, more we did. We did say originally yeah, that they're I huge. You suddenly see a shadow pass over the moon and you look up and you see this massive shape. Oh, yeah, that'd be scary. Oh, what if they're one of those things like just keeps growing over its lifetime? It oh, gosh. Oh, um, we did say that they uh, its courtship uh, is something to do with gathering ores. Hmm. So I'd imagine yeah. solo ones, the ones that don't court but still have gathered ores, incorporate that, that to themselves somehow. Yes. And you can actually, it's, um, it's not even... so much like an alpha steed type of situation. No, but you I... can see the lone steeds. I, I love if, um, like, it's part of their social dynamics that some of them pair off to create more, and then some of them specifically don't, so that there's powerful ones to protect the. Family? Ah. So, an alpha steed? Well, no. Not necessarily. Like, the. I wouldn't call it an alpha. I wouldn't say that, like, he's in charge because. But just like a bodyguard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Almost as though, like, it's it's a thruple, like, the, the basic um, social dynamics of a family is you have two that pair off and then they have a third. The third doesn't help with the actually creating the children 
the third helps with Protect. defending the next. Gotcha. Nice. A three gender kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes okay. Sense. Yeah. One yeah. which is more fertile and one which is stronger and more aggressive. Mm. Nice. Okay. Like so that. if you saw two of the little ones, you got to be very yeah, careful. Got to watch out. Around. You are about to get bodied by a giant. Oh yeah. That 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 asks the question though, Libri. You are kind of bonded with one of these massive ones. Does it think that it's one of your, one of its thruple? <laughs> Does it think you're a baby bat that it needs to take care of? What if this giant bat is just babysitting you? <laughs> you know how we, um, with cats, uh, I read this somewhere, that when cats bring you dead dead animals, like dead mice, dead birds as presents, it's because they're trying to teach you how to hunt. Mm. Because they think that you're just a really bad cat. Yes. Like, what if, when you bond with the giant bat, what if it thinks it's, you're just, like, a smaller, less, capable bat that needs to be taught the ways taken under its wing in a very literal sense i love it i like okay. that that's cool uh now so the masks we now have um i've renamed to the masks uh for the choice of thug aristocrat tinkerer stranger laborer loudmouth Those have changed a bit. Yeah. Mostly just the names. I wanted to take it away from the Western. Fair. Also, if anyone is wondering, the idea of having three genders in an animal mating group is a real thing as well. Hmm. The ruffs or sand vipers have three forms. One is... Um, like there are territorial males, there are satellite males, and there are almost gender fluid males, which I think is matching up with these bats. Yeah. Nice. I like that. Cool. So. Might do the thug mask. Can we go through them again, Libri, or? Uh, sorry, yes. Can you go over them again one yep. more time? But thug, aristocrat, mm -hmm. stranger, laborer, and loudmouth. Hmm. I am going to go with laborer. Okay. So is that labor? Yeah. I think it makes sense to me that someone from this mining settlement who's off on his or her first adventure would most probably have a bent towards being a laborer. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So. But our two characters and our two steeds. Well, one steed, one pile of steeds. Yes. What's with me and a pile of steeds? Love, love the piles. Oh yeah, you did one before as well, didn't you? <laughs> oh, what a card to draw first. Our first uh, group dynamics yeah, card. Me. The Fool. Right side up, it asks, How did our group first meet? What went well? Oh. Hmm. How did the group first meet and what went well? Oh boy. I have a question. Did we both set out adventuring close to each other or did one of us leave way before the other and we met by coincidence later on? Oh, I've messed up. Mm -hmm. Oh. So, this first question 
Do I have to think about it? And then we answer oh, it at the end of the phase. At the end of the phase. Yes. Sorry, I didn't read that. Before. Gotcha. Yeah. So yes, that is that is our question for the end of this phase. Um, yeah. How did we meet, and di how did it go well? Okay. Okay. So first, we're going to do a relationship. Um, okay. who would like to go first? Well, you can go first. Yeah, I'm happy to go first. Uh, we have the nine of cups. Is mm -hmm. cups. I shared an epic failure with Libri's character, um, mm -hmm. but it brought you closer. What was it? An epic failure that brought us closer. Um. Um. Hmm. That is an excellent question. Shit. I'm drawing such a blank. This is frustrating. Do you want to think about um, it? We'll go on to, to Libri's first question. I don't know. Yeah. And we're waiting until the end of the second round, right? Uh, to answer the fight, the group dynamics question. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, she's drawing a blank on. Up to you. Queen of Cups. Um, so you helped Posh's character when they were at their lowest. How did you help them? Hmm. He's right. These are difficult questions. <laughs> I am going to say... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, top of my head, I'm going to say that Porsche's character injured themselves in some way that even their pack of steeds were not able to help them out as much as possible. Hmm. Like maybe you injured your leg or you injured your arm in some way that was making transportation difficult and your steeds weren't really able to help you. And I am going to assume that my giant bat had more than enough space mm. to help you and your steeds out until you were back on your feet. Because what if, uh, like, Hosh, you'd, you'd gone out um, kind of away from the water a bit? Mm. You got these these amphibious fish steeds but they're they're, they're probably they faster in the water than than they are on land yeah um i really hope i'm not the one who may accidentally made you fall by just being a giant bat in your space unexpectedly <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's all right um but yeah no it's I imagine with like I've got a I've got a bunch of amphibious fish, but they use it's they're like out, outside of water. They go from like uh, they go from ground greyhounds in the water to like uh, bulldogs mm. out of the water. So they just kind of trance around really slow, like. Um, oh, speaking of water, what if like. You ran out of supplies. And like they couldn't mm. drag you and drag you back at all. Or something like that. Like if you yeah. were if, if you were striking out looking for another geyser, you just didn't find one. Ooh. No, it's always just lost. 
or just unable to get help. So, in, um, so I run out of supplies. Libri's character, uh, Steed, helped me. Back. Yeah. Broad wings. And then back to you, Posh. What, what, what did you, sh what failure did you share with Libri? Um, a shared failure. Um, brought you closer. I think my character, I feel like, was part of a mining crew. And I think between the two of us, we thought we'd found, like, a cave to uh, mine in. We hadn't realized it was a geyser. And because it's, like, this is the early, um, so, like, settling into this area... Is as when never, yeah. yeah. So, um, as, um, as we're settling into this area and discovering things and whatnot, um, yeah, the, the guys are blue, but we're still in it, and it was, um, um, and I think, I want to say the bat probably helped us out a lot for that one again and that kind of as much as it was like a stupid situation it was funny <laughs> there was some humor to have had um well, I wonder, <laughs> just Libri, shot out of a cave Libri, is this where you met yeah. your bat that's what i was thinking i feel like that's where the, the bond started to form where the bat just sort of saw two creatures that were getting shot out by the guys and just sort of instinctively swooped over to see what was happening. Oh, I thought that like you... I like them. That you... I, I misunderstood that, but I love the idea that you got caught up in the geyser and got shot out of the cave kind of into the open air and the bat kind of caught you <laughs> out of the air. I, I really like that idea. Really. Yeah. And there would have been this terrifying moment for both of us of, well, we're not going to crash on the ground, but I don't know if this is any better. <laughs> if this is pre, um, pre lake as well, me having cave fish would be a bit odd because they'd look so out of place. But you don't necessarily have to have the best fish seeds at the point, this point of the story. Mm, this, that's this is oh, that's also me. very true, is I don't imagine I'd have steeds at this stage. Because I don't think I would have had my bat steed yet. We Because this is very early, this is when we're still mining, and this is pre-lake. So I wouldn't have made a bond with my bat yet, and you would not have met your fish yet. Yeah. Well, what if this geyser that you found was the geyser? Oh, God. The yeah. geyser. I like that. And then Bush's character immediately gets swarmed by amphibious fish as the geyser just starts spurting water around. <laughs> no, the guys, the geyser w was used to collect water for a time before it was um, broken before it to, to become a lake. The lake. Yeah. Because this is how, like, if you, if the two of you started off as kind of these transient people looking for something. And you came across this geyser and you discovered that, you know, there is clean, fresh water that you can get if you are willing to, you know, risk the heat. Why do I feel like this is turning into a long, uh, repetitive series of Porsche's character going, I'm going to barge in and hang the consequences and me just sort of following? <laughs> Sounds like something I'd well, do. We've only got two. No, it's not necessarily going to be the same... Same story every time. It's only every story so far. No, no, I, I think it's <laughs> cute. I like the idea of it being like one of the first times we met was Bush created a problem. 
and when one of the times that i helped him with the queen of cups thing was when posh was in trouble <laughs> Sounds about well, right. That brings us back. Uh, how did these two characters fit? Bosch, did you create another problem? Or did Libri create a problem? And in... oh, that might that might be it. For once, I was the problem. <laughs> Were you the problem though? So you would have first met before you found the geyser. Mm hmm. Yeah. Or so before anyone lived in this area. What if we came in as a working team? And how we got. What if we were part of a larger crew? Mm hmm. And like someone walked off and just out of like it, it, whole new area with a lot of things going on it'd be easy enough for someone to kind of walk away and one of us sees the other one walking away and like, hold on you can't just leave you're gonna get lost and by the time we go to try and join everybody everyone else is already gone okay yeah I like that so it's like, hey, look, you can't leave. It's, you're going to get lost. And when we turn around, it's like, yeah, yeah. you're going to get lost. We turn around and no one's We there. are lost. Yeah. We, we are lost. <laughs> and now we're both lost. And now we're both lost. Well, the other, so... the, the other part of this question is what went well? So you're both lost in the wilderness and you're trying to find some way to make money from this hellscape that somebody claimed was full of good something. Mm. What went well out of that? Yeah, it could have been the discovery of the gourds. Yeah. It literally just being able to find... Um, what if being getting lost, what if a... the reason you got lost is because um, like you went into the, into the, the forest? Mm -hmm. Like Libri went into the forest, Posh followed, followed her, and you know brought her back because I just stray away from the group, or we'll get lost. Suddenly, I don't know if you make it back to the group, back, back out of the forest, and you don't know where the group is, or if you don't even make it out of the forest. But you do discover, like I don't know if a, a gourd drops on you or near you as you're trying to find the group and you discover that these gourds are full of full of drinkable liquid mm -hmm. quite pulpy on the inside got stuff in it edible and very solid oh, we went fast got lost I'm just imagining this being a Porsche's live reaction from two seconds away from berating me from walking away from the group and then getting completely distracted by oh, yeah. the fact that food is not <laughs> Just fuck food. <laughs> Great. Oh, goodness. It's got water. It's pulpy, surprisingly firm. And I'm just <laughs> standing there. Like, literally moments after being scolded for getting lost, I'm distracted eating <laughs> random food. You have no idea whether it's actually edible or not, whether it's poisonous or just, you know, this, these it, gourds. Yeah, this these looks like, fantastic. looks like food. We might be able to live here because there's food. I want to <laughs> say it's, the gourds were probably not the first thing that were eaten. <laughs> <laughs> You tried to chew the, the bamboo? The bamboo. It, yeah. oh, it, it fully could have been like two or three nights where we're eating stuff, hoping that it'd fill us. Just like bits of bamboo, scrapings of moss, because we don't know how to dry the moss and turn it into flour yet. Because I remember that was something. We oh, yeah. Was a thing. 
it's it's this moist moss we've grabbed it up by the fist full and we're like what is water and we've just squeezed it and it's dribbling like this dirty water is dribbling down in our forearm and i mean like the moss would be technically edible if it's edible in its dry form it's probably edible in its wet form so, like you no it's edible it's just side. disgusting Fist. yeah you could subsist oh, on yeah. it but it's not nice oh yeah then you find it's this edible, beautiful pulpy fruit Actually, actually, I have one suggestion. Mm-hmm. I have one suggestion. If the bamboo forest was easily visible, then even the people passing through would have stumbled across it. So what if we say that we accidentally wandered into one of the cave systems and came out the other end where one of the bamboo grows? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because if the bamboo forest was easy to wander into, I can't imagine there wouldn't have been anyone beforehand who wouldn't have gone in and come. But yeah, the caves, yeah. the caves are dark and scary and full of giant bats, so no one goes in there. Well, almost um, no one. Except me. <laughs> Unless this is one of those areas, it's... People come in, they go to work, they don't stray from the path. So the people that have come here might not have seen some things because they stick to a route. Okay. If you go... like they might have seen it, but they don't think it's worth their trouble to go explore it? Yeah. They're not here to deal with some of those things, or they're not okay, there to it. do some things. Because they don't know whether it's safe to do so, and they're not equipped to stay there that long and go yeah. and explore things. Yeah, that makes sense. So us kind of getting lost and we're out in these like bamboo fields, uh, these bamboo forests, and we're like, well, okay, we might be here for some time before we find people. Um, well, we're going to start eating some random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we survived is a miracle. Oh yeah. But you also proved that, that people can survive the... living here. Yeah, I think it's like the um the foreshadowing of people being able to be hardy enough to live there. I also like the almost fake out of like you're you're focusing on moss and water and so eventually your steed is the amphibious fish and I wandered into the bamboo forest and I'm dealing with okay. the birds and it yeah. feels like I'm going to be drawn to the sugar gliders but no it's the giant bats. Nope, giant bat. <laughs> this excellent fake out where you think she's going to create a bond with these adorable tiny sugar gliders. And just a giant bat takes over the screen, and that's the end of that. <laughs> I, it, it feels like I, the way I picture it is like it's like the typical girly girl kind of thing, and you're like, oh, look, she's really sweet. She's in there with the sugar gliders, blah, blah, blah. And just this big gothic bat uh, exactly. appears out of the background, and it's just gaunt. It like just a silhouette with two red eyes or something with like two that. Red eyes. Yeah. yeah, it goes from like your cottage core girly girl, then it's just this exactly. gothic bat in the background, and you're like, oh. And, and to add to that, I do think my character she is very cottage core. She is very girly, even though she's like like mining workman labor it's very like um nice fabrics and pastels and she likes her florals when she can get them and then her steed is just dracula yeah <laughs> I love giant it. flash bat with red eyes i love that okay moving on our next question to consider while we while we uh, answer our next questions Wheel of Fortune upside down is our group had a streak of bad luck and we ended. Oh, what happened? Dear. What happened to this partnership that what what bad luck did you have? That's something for you to consider. I'm going to force uh nobody's answering it yet. Oh, this is like the yeah. full gotcha. But you, Posh, I'm gonna make you answer first again. 
Okay. Didn't answer first last time. <laughs> um, that's the eight of... Right side up. Where are those who break rules in our location sent? What happens there? So yeah, after we after the the lake is formed, after, after lake. yeah after people start living here, and some measure of law is in, is put into place, what do they do to people who break those laws? Also, I have a minor question: Are we uh, opening up to questions from the chat as well? Because I remember that was quite fun in our first session. We absolutely are if there was somebody chat. At the moment, we've just got one Some person. So chat, just so you know, you are free to ask us any questions you like about the world, about our characters, about our seeds. If you feel the need. Anyway, sorry, continue. Yeah, no, that's all right. Um, so where do lawbreakers go hmm they don't have to go somewhere if you want them to go with in some other way um no I feel like hmm No, I feel like they're sent into caves and they become part of, um, like, exploring parties. Because it's what it's one of those environments, it's, you're not going to waste resources making a prison. It's a touch morally bankrupt to try and, like, punish him somewhere in a land that's already everything is punishing. kind of stuff yeah everything's stuffing you over already too so the best they can kind of do is um i think they put them part of caving expeditions that way it's they're still useful if you get stuck in a cave then that's on you for being a dig or even just so, the idea that like we've got this oasis and it's the ones who kind of who break that social norm and don't like live peacefully are the ones who are then sent to go out and find other places and find other resources. Hmm. Um, I like the idea that um, the caves that aren't flooded, uh, it is a wide network of caves hmm. underground that could be anywhere from flooded volcanic and it, it it's um it is greatly beneficial to send people in but no one goes because of how dangerous it can be yeah. breaking these social norms puts you in to be that person It's like, you're still going to be helpful. We're not going to screw you in that sense. But if you die doing it, that's what you get for being a turd. Yeah. Oh, I love, I just love the, that's what you get for being a turd. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get. So, lawbreakers. You mastered it. Uh, oh, no. So lawbreakers are sent. B. Cave explorers. And then Libri. Someone in our location, averse to change. Who is it and why is routine so important to? Sorry, can you repeat that? Someone in our location is averse to change. Who are they and why is routine so important to them? Hmm. 
someone in our location is a sneaky change. I, hmm, I'm going to say that there is one older person who is just refusing to leave. Well, if these characters, like mm. they, we say they discovered the first geyser uh, mm. and they were part of an, an initial search party. So these would be p part of the first generation. Oh, no, no, you're right, you're right. These would well, be I mean, the more trans in any case. But I mean, either way, it still would have been mostly younger people. It would have been younger people, yeah, that makes sense. And so there's absolutely a chance that, you know, the younger people are coming and doing the work, the older people are going back home to where they were from, even Ooh. after the kind of settlement was developed, some amount of them would have left. So mostly mm. it'll be young people. There could be, like, one older person who came with maybe the first group and has said, yeah, no, this is my home. I'm not going anywhere. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like, despite people telling him how unhealthy it's getting, like, the longer he stays here, the worse his health gets. And it would be much better for him to go back to the original settlement that he came from or um, to move on to greener pastures. He just refuses to move. And I'm going to assume that it's because he has been traveling for so much of his life and not having any stability and not having a place that he would consider home with a capital H that even if it kills him he's going to stick to this one well I love that even like some way this this person um, because he had so much hardship in his youth and so refused to leave I feel like that is what leads to the cultural norm of like children and younger people like being around the home being around the, the area helping out the the community and then when they get older they get sent out to leave yeah yeah i like that like with this being such a such a dangerous place to be yeah while you're young and, and vibrant you can be here and do the dangerous work and then you leave and see the world Absolutely. That brings us back to our group question. Was the fortune down? Group had a streak of bad luck and nearly ended. What happened? Group being the, the partnership of the two characters. Mm -hmm. Which we will need to find names for it. Now, what nearly broke up your partnership? Hmm. Reckon one of us got sick and someone got irrationally mad about it. Like, it could have been a moment of trust doing something, and it was such an erratic... It's... It was, like, sick, like, dysentery or something along those lines, and it was... It just evolved into such an irrationally mad about it type of situation. Well, did one of you... Like, because the two of you, you were saying, like, ate everything. One of you, like, after... After you had found what was edible and started developing some way of making food, when you just started eating something else that was obviously that whether you had tested it before or whether you found something new that you wanted to test, like mm -hmm. just the foolhardiness of saying, well, everything's edible, isn't it? <laughs> it it's fully it's... edible at least once. Oh, yeah. What if this is how we found out the cave fish, um, Steeds? Um, excreted poison oh, it's, we were drinking yeah. from, we were drinking from the water they were swimming in that um, makes sense yes because they are supposed to be extremely toxic yeah and, and they, um, they secreted the poison as like a fear response yeah 
So what if like they they not not the water, but what if um what if Libri is well I'm not gonna put it on, on Libri specifically, but you've got this herd of the the amphibious fish that um Posh's character hangs out with. Mm -hmm. And what if like the idea was that maybe this like it maybe it's like milk that they're producing. A milky substance. And like one of you goes, okay, well, we're gonna have to see if it's something we can like if we can farm these fish amphibian things to create milk, that, that could solve all of our food problems. Mm. And you just drank poison. <laughs> Absolutely no hesitation. <laughs> like I'm, I'm willing to put that on my like. I feel it'd have to be some kind of joint discussion where we're like, "You sure? Yeah, no, cool," and we're both kind of sold on it. And when like, let's say my character was like, goes to drink it, it is immediately sick. And is like that for some yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, I went to gym because we did say the fish were extremely toxic. So even if you, even if we said, oh, we're just going to taste a small amount of it. We're not going to drink too much. We're just going to taste a bit and see. Because that's how tasting initially worked, right? You tasted yeah. a little bit to see if you felt sick and then you had a bit more. But this is probably like even a tiny taste of it puts you out for a while. And of course, mm. the, the way this nearly broke, broke up the group would be that maybe the two of us, like, we're too adventurous. Like, because that can, that can be a thing that happens when people are, like, the adventurous people are the ones that find new places. And once the places are settled, like, those people can feel out of touch with the, the settled group. Mm. And, like, maybe, like, the two of you started thinking, well, are we in the wrong area now? Like, we've, the place is settled. We don't need to, there's no more secrets for us to uncover. Yeah, I feel like uh, what would have like really pushed here is there was a moment of trust where it's like, hey, we can do this. And um, it's the immediate knee jerk reaction after getting sick is, hey, look, I trusted you with this one. Now I'm suffering for it. Mm. And it's a purely irrational thought behind it even though it was a joint decision someone's turned around and is going hey look I'm suffering now I'm mad about it yeah. no I get that and, I and for like the imagine. for like the week where they're suffering it's they have not enjoyed nothing they're not going to think rationally about it <laughs> they're, they're, they're fully I'll, I'll say it's my character is fully blaming Libri's character even though it was a joint decision. Yeah. That's what I will keep throwing back in your face. Like, I am, like, if you turn around <laughs> and blame me, which you will, I'm going to have that immediate knee-jerk anger response back of, we, we agreed <laughs> that we would do this. This was, I did not push you to do this. <laughs> we said we were going to do this together. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to do this together as so you damn near killed me. <laughs> I've been shooting non-stop. <laughs> I can't sit down. Oh, was this going to be like we said we're going to we're going to taste it on three, and one of us did it on three, and one of us thought it was going to be one, two, three, and then taste it. <laughs> so you did it I did it. That's why you're sick and I'm fine. And you're like, you did this on purpose. You must have known. You must have known. Okay, so I have looked up. We had Ziwa, which I think was South African. Uh, yes, South African yes. lake. Lake, yeah. Um, and so I've looked up South African names, and I've picked out um, Kaya, which turns out is a girl's name, but we'll just say that it is. Um, the Kaya is our old man that won't leave. How do we spell some of these? K. A Y A. It's like a restful place. Nice. Um, I don't know if you two want to name your characters. 
Um, but we will write some notes about who they are. Oh, yeah, I'm going to grab some names. Oh, that's right. We went Swahili. Ah. Oh, I and... am going to go see if I can find any Guyanese girls' names. As we do this, we're running low on time, so I was going to do one more creature in Exquisite Biome. Sure. Up that game. Uh, names for your characters. Um, so I would think I might go with the character being Kuthabutu, uh, which is That's a lovely name. What does that mean? It translates to daring. Ooh, daring! Okay. Daring. Almost all names I do, I literally go to Google Translate and be like, hey, hello. <laughs> Give me something. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, I love that. Wait. <gasps> I found it. I found mm -hmm. the name. And the name? My name is Azaman. So which comes from the Arabic Asman, which means sky or heaven. Oh. How do we spell that one? Um, according to this website, it's A-Z-I-M-A-N. A-Z-I-M-A-N. Yep. Awesome. Kuthabudu, Asman, and we got Kaya. Kuthabudu. Pack of amphibians. Yeah. Which we're gonna have to name at some stage. All these, all these uh, steeds that we're coming up with. Nice. Oh, we have to come up with names. <laughs> yeah, I know it's so bad. And as a man has a giant bat. Love it. Let's make another one before we uh, start worrying about names. Okay. okay. So. Um, thin biome have so our first critch card is a spade which is an invertebrate insect squid arachnid mollusk station and as a queen it is an ambush predator hey. that's something we don't that's have any of idea. yet um part two a distinctive feature uh Red. Red suits, diamonds. Six makes it uh, more or fewer appendages, I think. So it's definitely a huntsman spider. <laughs> oh, but is it like, is it a huntsman spider with like 10 or 12 legs? 12 legs. This is extremely uh, upsetting, but I'm going to continue. <laughs> 12 legs. Oh. Uh, I feel like 12 would actually be too many. Like, how would you fit all those legs on one body? This, this is also true. Maybe 10. It could no, just be that I'm, big. I'm, I'm happy with that one. Like, I mean, millipedes oh have lots of God. legs. Guys, wait, wait, wait. Like, 12 legs, but the body is a bit elongated, so it looks kind of like a centipede spider. This is, oh yeah, even more horrifying. Oh, and then it's, it's an ace is its habit and personality. So it's an invasive species. This is where we make it a gargantuan steed too. We <laughs> <laughs> <It's laughs> like, really double down, down on how bad this is. So yeah, we've got an invasive species that has made it into this region and something about this region makes it thrive. Ah, ooh, what if so... Remember we said that we have a lot of people traveling back and forth. Hmm. What if they're initially a very small variety of spider <sighs> that hitched onto someone's back, but they're thriving and growing larger here, like the bats were, like the bats are. What if it was a steed initially made for recycling, but because it had, um, it's now got access to things that don't know how to fend it off. 
and that it considers effectively rubbish that it's been able to take these things on and grow to extensive Ooh. proportions okay. Like a, like a construction construction vehicle or something. Yeah. Um, oh my god, it's horrifying because I can only imagine that they found their best niche in the deepest, darkest, dampest portions of the cave system. Yes. I'm terrified by this new thing we've created. Uh, well, there is some good news. The last card was an a as a heart. A heart means mm -hmm. it's a solitary species. Oh, thank god. <laughs> so there's only one. Well, only one so at a time. More, it's more Shelob from Lord of the Rings than Agrajag from Harry Potter. Yes. So invasive, solitary, twelve-legged huntsman, um, and it's that is an ambush predator. Hmm. I like the idea it it, it does cannibalize other steeds. Hmm. So oh, it uses that the, instead of using the ore for sustenance, it uses the metals from other steeds for sustenance. Yeah. Oh. oh, does that mean like if someone has a huntsman steed or whatever this thing is going to be called, then the way it repairs itself is also by cannibalizing existing things? Yes. It's steed weaver. Steed weaver. I love that. It's like, imagine it just kind of knits bit. Like, imagine it starts off with eight legs that's what i was starting to it think that what if, it knits on more yeah what if it, it uses uh like the way that it hunts um kind of spends its legs and then when it eats a new thing it uses that that body to create a new leg oh that's interesting it's almost like uh, the molting process where insects will come into their final form with all of their legs and feelers and whatnot after several periods of molting, but instead they're attached to more things on. That's great. This is an... Imagine being just a normal... Just, you're having a great time. You're discovering this place, blah, blah, blah. Massive fuck off spider shows up, <laughs> and that's that's worse though because when you when they're first kind of exploring this place, it wouldn't be here. Yeah, so they did their first explorations, and then they went back to places that they'd already proved were safe. And there's this massive spider eating all of the local uh, steeds. Yeah, can we just have like a split screen of one person with soft music in the background just? Dancing around with the sugar glider in the brightly lit bamboo forest, and then a split screen of someone screeching in horror as they run away from the <laughs> massive huntsman in the cave. Hey, what? What if just to kind of double down is if we're doing this as it uh, it was like it. The way I pictured it is it starts off really small and it like does like yeah, bin yeah. tabs and stuff uh, it like can pull tabs and stuff like that. <laughs> literally literally like it's an innocent recycler thing. Mm. Can and because it's been able to grow um it's um it now if it gets big enough it blurs the line between what's a steed and what's a person. Oh god. So you may okay. find literally organic parts. Yeah. This is becoming very Freddy. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we have like, ima 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 well. like imagine there's um like someone's like there's like a skull in someone's femur, like with a bit drilled through it, and they've used that to make a limb to somewhat um with like other oh, pulleys like, and pistons. It's like. Uh... The black widow that has the spooky shape on its back but it's an actual skull on the back yeah yeah, yeah. like it full on it's if it gets big enough the line blurs and they're all like hey look this is rubbish in a natural environment so while it, for plants and things <laughs> like that it's fine it's the stuff that moves and feels out of place it's all like you're not meant to be here oh, oh and okay. with the if it if it also if it does eat some plants, it could have incorporated the bamboo uh, wood into its chassis. So it's right, heat resistant right. now. I have, I have a concept for you. 
I have a concept. Rattling gourds. Oh. And you just hear that. In the dark. Yeah, exactly. You're in the dark. You hear like a rattlesnake style noise, and it chases you into like it like into a corner. It scares you into into a corner where it can grab you. Nice. I like how all of us have immediately gone from "Oh no, this is too scary" to making it even worse. Even worse. Yeah, just if, we, if it's gonna be scary, we're gonna we make it scary. Most terrifying. I like the idea though, like of skulls and femurs, because I think like definitely it's also like trying to break down and recycle um, dead bodies that it finds, or any like old grave sites with whatever bones it can find. It's just like it's just recycling, refurbishing whatever it can get its hands on. Mm. So it's a bit of a scrap steed, something that's literally made for like rubbish and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But because it's not in its own environment, a lot of these lines have blurred. Yeah, I want to say that like it was originally made and common in like in. Yeah. And the, yeah, mm, they, they're they're yeah. used to to break down pieces of stuff, and there's some process you can go through to kind of, uh. The, like like yeah, have it shed that it shed its skin, and then you can take its the skin and use it as 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 um like a base material. Mm. But yeah, once they go wild, um, you need to get in close to touch that button to to get it to shed its sh- shed its skin. And if it thinks and that your if food, it's big, if it's big enough and it doesn't, uh, it no longer identifies you as not a natural organic thing. That's where it becomes a very dangerous thing in the world. And I like the idea of it being raised and developed in an urban environment. So it has, it has a very binary idea of what is recyclable material and what is not. But then when it goes out in environments it's unfamiliar with and it goes wild because it was never meant to understand mm. these new things, that's where the line starts getting blurry because it just has no frame of reference for what any of these things are and so it just responds by recycling everything. Yeah. Um, so I know, I know we were just talking about how bad it is, how hard it is to make names, but I'm going to call this a weaver. Yeah, I've got written down a steed weaver. Yeah, no, but so yeah, the, the name of the steed is a weaver and it got that name because uh, as a recycler, it would eat rusted metal weave it back into like a carbon fiber style metallic thing which would which would use as skin and then you can like slough that skin off to to use as a as a base material nice nice i'm just imagining being in some town on the edge of the desert or something and you hear a rattling and some guy with a scrap mask and like tattered oh. pieces of a tattered cape it just comes in riding on a massive on a massive weaver it would be terrifying that would be so scary <laughs> And even like I think like someone's mask, like if someone has has both the scrap mask and the weaver steed, you could say that the mask is actually made out of scraps of weaver skin. Mm. And yeah, cool. once once they're not just kind of taking on little bits of of metal and rust, and they're actually taking on whole whole steeds as things that it's weaving. It, yeah, it gains these just of bits. It, like so, it's, it doesn't have a smooth skin anymore. It's got bits of steed, like arms and legs of other steeds, kind of poking yeah. out of its hu- hu- its hull. It's like the assassinant, where it's like it's got bits yeah. of like it's kill uh, like corpses, pretty much glued to it. It is just massive and gaudy. That's why I think it's like something like that one to make it really stand out is to have it as gargantuan as possible. Mm. It's like because deliberately building it up. Not just that it is like it because it is um, an ambush predator, something that big, but still being able to ambush and hide, yeah, would be yeah. terrifying. Well, if it, I, I think that the way that it ambushes, that I think the way that it ambushes is that like if it if it like kind of powers down and lies down, it's indistinguishable from like a pile of dead steed. Ooh. So it looks like just a dead steed pile. Yeah, like a graveyard. 
Oh god, just like in the just like in those games where you just walk past five bodies and there's a zombie just hiding in the middle of it. That's so scary. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Imagine zo- with like a pile of dead bodies, a pile of zombies and stuff like that. But it f- opens up into spider zombies. Yeah, like the entire <laughs> pile is oh, one spider. That. Oh god, what's what's that boss's name in was it one of the Dark Souls games? One of the Dark Souls games. Mm-hmm. That was just made up of bodies. It was Ooh. one boss made up of bodies. I think there's a um might be Bloodborne. Bloodborne? I know there's a I uh, know there's a uh, boss like that in Bloodborne. Does anyone in the chat know what I am talking about? We can find out in a second. As we do that, uh, we are out of time. Um, oh, so... it's the first. I just googled a boss made of bodies, and I found <laughs> it in the first. It's called it's called the Rock in Dark Souls. Okay. And it's just a, a figure made out of bodies. Oh God! Oh, Dark Souls too. That's why I haven't beaten it. God, that's awful. Love so that. So imagine I... that that body, that pile just gets up and it's one thing. <laughs> it's your God. Yeah, fair this enough. This is so funny to me because all of us are going, that's horrifying, that's terrible. But this person that I'm imagining that actually is bonded with one of these seeds probably just treats it like, you know, like some people will have those massive, terrifying looking dogs and they'll say, oh, he's just a softie. Yeah. Push him off. <laughs> and you go, no, it's going to bite off my hand. Sit there with a hand underneath the chin and just go, you who's a little cutie? And you sit there going, yeah. that's not a little cutie. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that steed on its back still got the pilot in it. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> the pilot is just screaming. <laughs> oh god, that's even worse. Okay. But yes, that is all we have time for today. Um, remember to check out the game at kettleandclock.itch.io and also we do have a Patreon for this project. Sign up to get early access to the regions as we come up with them uh, and complete access to the published works as soon as they're released. Thank you for coming and I look forward to discovering more about Ziwa in two weeks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.